So you go to this event um, and you're already, you're number six, you know, right? Already in your state. Um, you come, yep. Or number nine. <laughs> so then you come back um, yep. and uh, you make that switch. Um, and then within two years, now you're number one. So kind of walk us through like what happened in those couple of years and what did you change um, that allowed you to go from number nine to number one in just a, such a short period of time? Well, uh, the first year you kind of make the mistakes, you take the step backwards. Uh, you know, I didn't have as good of a year cause I'm, you know, I started taking a bunch of training. I, th- I had more training in that first year or two, uh, at Carolyn Williams than I did in my first 10 years in the business. Cause I just went and I, and I would go to the recharge events or not recharge, but, uh, the Inman events and things like that. But when I went down to Austin to the mega, um, agent training, and listen to the guys up on stage. I remember being there. There's a guy in Maine that does, um, actually, he's, he's killing it this year. He'll be doing about $100 million. He's the number one agent in our company. Um, and he and I were sitting next to each other. And I was number one at that time. But I, I leaned over to him and said, do you feel like a high school hero right now? You know, basically, you know, these guys are professionals up on stage. Like, 1,000 homes in a year, things like that. So, there, I learned from the mistakes of others, the best practices of others, you know, going to the conferences saying, all right, what are you using for CRM? What are you guys using for, on Zillow? How much are you spending? So basically, and that's the, the culture of, I was just at a conference last week where everybody sat at a room and said, all right, what are you struggling with? What are you doing well? And sharing job description. I talked to a guy that used to work at Starbucks and I'm really trying to nail down my buyer agent procedures right now. And he's like, well, I was a buyer's agent for two years and I came from Starbucks from 11 years. I, I've basically documented everything about a buyer agent, but I'm light and he's now getting into being a listing agent. I said, well, I've got the listing agent stuff. That's what we do well. So I'm actually, he's on my list to call today to say, all right, we're both have agreed to just swap. You know, I'll give you my listing agent stuff. You give me buyer agent stuff. So to answer your question, it, it's a lot of talking with people, figuring out how they're doing it, copying it, and then sharing. And it's just, we all kind of rise with the tide. Yep. Yep. Love it. So, so you get in there, you, you, you dive in and heavy into training. Like you said, in 12 months, you did more than you did the, the previous decade, um, which, which, yeah, you took a little step back, but sometimes we have to take that step back to move forward. we got to sharpen our ax, you know, right? It's, uh, yep. it, it's like uh, Abraham, you know, Lincoln's famous quote of, if you gave me an ax and six hours chopped down a tray, it's been the first four hours sharpening the ax, you know? Right. Um, um, so you had a little dip from that, right? Which was necessary because then, boom, you know, right? So like, what were some of the things, some of those instantaneous shifts? Cause I'm assuming that it wasn't like your listing, you know, how, how you, your tactical things to go out there and sell this listing, right? It was probably internal processes inside your organization, your team, um, oh, and the leverage that you did that allowed that catapult to you from number nine to number one, you know, cause now we're talking what two years, because by 2015, you're now number one, yep. you know, right? So, then what happens? Like, how do you start growing your team and, and doing those things to catapult that? All right. So I made a couple of really good hires. Uh, the hiring process is a very um, hard thing. And if you get it right, it's great. If you get it wrong, it, it can be very painful. Um, but luckily I had some people that wanted to be on my team uh, that came from the company that I came from to get into Kelo Williams. And, and they started doing the stuff that I hated. Like, the just listed cards, the the contracts, and you came up with a checklist of all right. This this is what we're going to do for every one of our listings. So when I went into a listing presentation, when, as I still do now, we've got full two full two time full time staff and then a virtual assistant. But I can go into a listing appointment and say, all right, these sixty five things are going to happen. Yeah, you know, whether it's me or the people whose initials are next to these things. So what happens in the real estate is as I got busy. I'd stop doing some of the lead generation stuff or I'd stop, I'd mess up and not do some of the flyers that I was supposed to do. So when you're trying to do it all on your own, things slip through the cracks. So basically when to put the team together and structured what we did and how we did it and who did it, things weren't falling through the cracks. So we were just more effective. So as we became more effective in getting more leads, getting more listings, and actually from a buyer agent perspective, because from the real estate process, what you know, you first get into real estate, you're dealing with buyers, you know, because you don't have any listings yet. And that's your quickest way to a paycheck. And then you start getting some listings. So now you've got some listings and some buyers and life is good. If you get good at it, then you get so many listings, you don't have time for buyers. So all of that 
money or revenue, potential revenue falls to the ground if you don't capture it in some way. So getting the buyer's agents on my team was instrumental. And it was kind of like the people that I used to refer to, but now they're on my team and I don't lose that referral later. Like the people, that $6 million in sales, that's just now to zero because those agents took them and have those clients for life if they do the right things. Now I have those clients for life because it's all under my umbrella. So it was really putting the team together, solidifying the processes and making sure less things slip through the cracks in the, the initial years. And then yeah. it kind of gets a snowball as you start getting the rip because on the luxury side too, luxury is kind of a popularity contest. It's all kind of who, you know, plus being able to prove that you know what you're doing. And so that combined, combined with really solidifying what we're doing was kind of my second. The first one was the teaming with the internet company. The second one was creating a team and using that team and that leverage to be able to, to say to these luxury buyers and sellers, yeah, we really got our stuff together. Yeah.